Hi everyone, welcome to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to uh, some techniques that we're going to use to give a casual elegance. Now, these techniques that I'm going to be showing you uh, in the next couple of videos, there can be found right here in this book. It's our new uh, book on Mastering Roses. This is volume six. This is a uh, part of a 10 uh a volume series where I show some of the different techniques uh, that I use to uh, paint uh, rose compositions from brush techniques to color techniques to mixing techniques, um, underpainting techniques, and so on and so forth. So we're going to uh, be showing you here some very fun techniques, and today we're going to use a technique that we're doing an underpainting uh, with the uh, with, with the global color, but an underpainting onto a dry background um, that's featured in this in this book. So there's other ones where I do uh, different types of backgrounds and stuff. The whole series is is a wonderful series. So if you if you really look into to learn how to paint roses, get into some of that. Okay, so let's get going here. So to the background that I have here, this is a regular board. Um, this is a board. Uh, it's a uh, MDF panel. I use these in the books. I use these in DVDs. I've used them hundreds of times. And uh, what I did is uh, I took some color. First, I painted it. It is just an off-white color, a medium white color. We also have the medium white color. It's like this. It's it come. We also have a premix of it for those that just want to get it premixed. It is just black and what it's white with just a touch of black and a, a touch of uh, yellow, yellow oxide or Hansa yellow, any of the yellows. And I based the board with that. And then I took a little yellow oxide with a uh, tiny touch of black in it and just wiped it over the, the surface here with a paper towel. So I left some areas that were just kind of uneven. That just gives you a different type of uh, surface to the background. The one that I did here in the cover of the book, I did it to a solid opaque and so I can really get the color, the flowers to pop off. So um, you could use either either technique, but I just used a paper towel and wiped it off. And uh, you know, you're ready to go. Sand the surface with like a 180 grit sandpaper. Prep it like we show you in the books. And and uh, we have all kinds of videos on that on our YouTube channel and everywhere else. So um, you can find some of that information there. But I just sand it lightly with like 180 grit sandpaper. And uh, then I get going. Now, you can transfer a design. If you're new to painting, you can transfer a design. If you have a book or if you're watching this DVD, there'll be a design in with it. But you can transfer the the design or just go through with what I highly recommend is just some freehand painting here um, and it's it's a much better way to go now the colors I'm going to use these are the colors that uh, the global colors that I put out I put in the heritage multimedia I put some extender into these and mix these all up these videos on how I do this is all on our YouTube I also have them on the global art supply I have everything into the book and and everything so there's all kinds of ways to do this, but um, uh, you just I just mix it all up. Now I'm going to add a couple of this. These right here are the painted simply colors, and then I'm going to add a couple of extra colors to it, which is the uh, yellow oxide today. I'm going to use some burnt sienna today and some pine green that I have out here. Those are other two uh, colors. If you don't, you can paint this just with the limited color set, and I have a a lot of videos that just show uh, using the. Uh, the six colors of the limited palette set. So there's a lot of, a lot of things you can you can shortcut that, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of that as we get into this. Okay, but let's get going. So I have a dry background. We're going to want to make some nice elegant roses. We're going to do a little underpainting first of some rose shapes. To do that, I'm going to uh, do an underpainting of a, and I'm going to do a little wet underpainting here, but I'm going to do it with some uh, white, and then I'm going to take this off color just a little bit with some. Uh, some like some yellow or something here, yellow yellow oxide. Sometimes I'll add, I'll dirty it up with a um, like a little bit of black. This makes uh, gets it down towards that medium white color that I like to uh, to uh, do backgrounds and stuff like that with. And um, it it's about a, what we call a value seven. So it's uh, if you have a value scale of uh, white being uh, ten and down to one is black. This is about a value seven or so. So as you see, that's the color that's right there. That's that's the same color that's right there. So it's pretty close to that. And I've these colors all have extender mixed in them. I'll poke in a little extra extender. This is extender medium. Extender medium extends your drying time of your paint. Um, and I just use it out uh, in a little cap like that. And I'll just mix that into the colors. It's already pre-mixed into all these colors here but I'll mix it into some of these colors here. 
and we're going to start some uh, the idea of some roses and what I'm going to do is a rose is basically and we we know this from the uh, um, the video I mean from the the books so far that the rose is really just a set of three circles here and I'll start down a circle this will be like the bowl of the rose and then I like to come out and I, I like to put in what we call the reaching petals the petals that uh, go out into the bowl of the rose here that uh, are these are the older more mature petals and I use all different kinds of techniques to stroke them in this is a three-quarter inch brush it's a big uh, uh, brush that is uh, it's very very soft it's a, a synthetic squirrel I use them uh, you know these are old ones that I've just I've painted so many paintings with and it's uh, it's a but it's a specialized brush it's very soft and so it's perfect for um, uh, doing you know these types of techniques that I use with painted simply and with mastering roses it's a beautiful beautiful brush for uh, for doing this type of work but um, it it makes in combination with the uh, um, the extended acrylics here it makes it feel just like you're painting with a with an oil it's beautiful it's a beautiful feeling so I'm just going to come out here and state uh, a couple of shapes for the roses that I, I might have it doesn't have to be perfect here because we can change you know everything on here but um, it is just an idea for me where I'm going to maybe do some uh, some roses and some flowers little oval shapes like this will uh, give you a, a feeling of a rosebud and stuff so let's just do one maybe see one right out there let's turn this down this way so we'll turn uh, and have some maybe a, a rose that that's beginning to open up down there and uh, one that's a rosebud coming down this way here something like that and uh, that'll give a little difference you could either put smaller uh, flowers and stuff a step back just a bit you can put smaller flowers and stuff in there but um, as far as uh, um, you know with this is I want to just paint the roses because that's what we're really kind of showing you here is the roses now I'll change the colors up a little bit let's change the colors let's add a little bit of yellow to to this so we'll warm this up maybe uh, we'll put some of that yellow right into here this this models it up well, I put some into the other flowers just for the pure harmony of it. So just a little bit into some of the other flowers here for some harmony. Now, many times what I do is I also wipe my brush back like this, um, take off any of the extra paint as I move from color to color. I never go clean my brush into water or something like that because that in introduces a, a fast drying pigment into it. I mean, a fast drying element into it. The heritage paints is very are very very slow drying paints when they have that extender mixed into it. But if you go mix in a bunch of water, they're going to start drying faster again because the water is going to cause them to dry faster. And they're very heavy pigmented paints, so I can switch colors if I just wipe my brush like this. I can go switch another color and they don't affect each other as long because they're so heavy pigmented. You take a cheaper acrylic, and you would get you get garbage. You get dirty color. It'd be just go uh, gray on you right away and that's because they don't contain as much pigment these contain as much pigment as an oil paint so you can do the oil painting type techniques let's take a little uh, red violet down here and to that maybe I'll add a little burnt sienna also just right uh, onto my brush here and I'll use this to generate the center of the rose here or what I want it to be the center of the rose here like this now I can use my finger like this and push it right into that background just let it just fade right out there into the background I use my hands a lot in the painting you don't have to worry that heritage is completely non-toxic so you don't have to worry about any of that and I'll put in a bowl shadow this is the shadow the area right between where the reaching petals are and the uh, um, the uh, where the reaching petals are coming out here and the bowl petals now if I want this rose to open up let's open this rose up a little bit more I will drop the center down so if I drop that center down a little further than what we've done in some other lessons like that that center is going to open up so the rose here will open up a little bit more we'll just add a little more dark down into there 
be a little more red violet, a little more burnt sienna, right down in like that. And let's just, just apply some nice heavy tone there. And then just lift the pressure on your brush and small little tap movements as it gets out. And that helps uh, set the movement there of the flower. Now, if you want to lift off some of that red, you can just go like this and, and take off some of that red that was there. And uh, we'll get back to some other lighter color there. Just a little bit of that. You can restate other light color back in there if you want, but it's not really necessary. We have that. That'll, that'll work fine for us. I might just shoot in a little bit of yellow right in there. I start to, when I'm painting like this, I start to look for color um, color harmonies. And so yellow is going to be, yellow's quite a bit of yellow in our background, so it's color that I'm going to look for doing some harmony to some of these. Let's take a little more burnt sienna with this one. And let's just put a little burnt sienna in there and that bowl shadow there. So we'll come around like that and we'll just kind of mix it and push that right out into the background there and let that get soft right there like that. So there's some burnt sienna. Oh, let's touch a little burnt sienna maybe into this one too, especially your main rows. It's one of the things that I like. If you're painting for elegance, which we're painting for a, a nice look of elegance here, you're going to want to have color harmony. So you're going to, even though I may have this one mostly burnt sienna or so, a touch of red violet into the center of that one and and some burnt sienna into that one. They'll be slightly different, but they, they'll go together very well. And you can slide uh, it over a little bit more to the yellow side or so. Let's put a softer, a little bit of yellow oxide into this color here. Right here, we'll come over to the side and let's just add a little bit of that right in there to make a soft, soft little uh, color foreshadowing on that. And I'm just, all I'm doing right now is I'm not really specifically, other than maybe seeing some of the, the rows a little bit, but I'm not specifically painting the um, painting the flowers yet. I'm just moving color. That's what we want to do, is just move some color. I don't want to get in there and specifically paint the flowers or anything like that yet. We're just going to move some color around, model some color around, and see how we do here. Let's... Uh, Let's put on some bright color. Here's a Hansa yellow. Let's put some Hansa yellow and some yellow oxide together. And let's put on a little bit of brighter color, warmer, brighter color here into that uh, center part of that or into the front of the bowl of that rose there. We won't put the bright color too much into the back, maybe a little, a little bit back in there like that. Just model that in. Okay, a little bit back in there. But we won't put it too far to the back. That'll bring that back too uh, too far forward. So we'll keep that a little bit uh, more to the front. Maybe some of that right out here. And um, you know, maybe we'll maybe we'll take that. Let's take a little bit of Naplo Red Light and some of our Hansa Yellow here. About three parts Hansa Yellow, one part Naplo Red Light makes a beautiful orange kind of color here. So let's put some of that into maybe this one here. So we'll really change uh, this one up. We'll go orange to red here into this one. That's kind of pretty. And then we'll, we'll look for our harmony. We'll touch a little bit of it here and there into the other flowers and um, pull them in. Now let's come in and so we got some of that color moving. Around the, it's a nice good shapes here for us to paint. You might want to come back and restate a little bit of your shadow for the bottom of the bowl there. That's kind of a nice thing to do to make sure you see that. Or if we're going to open the flower up, you can pull that bowl shadow in a little bit more, a little farther forward in there. Now let's come in and let's take some some green. Let's just model into that some of our. This is pine green, a nice base. Let's get it warm because we're working on that. Let's put some burnt sienna in it here because we're working on this background here. And um, <clears throat> don't want it super dark yet. So let's uh, let's lighten it up. Even add a little bit of our, our background there to it or our base of our rose. And that always makes sure that the green and your rose are going to go together because they're carrying some of the same colors. Okay, so let's just come out here and... We'll, we'll kind of sketch out uh, where we want to have some leaves. And usually what I want, I'd like to do is in the center of the design, 
I like to get the leaves very formal. I don't even have to show you exactly, uh, you know, a leaf shape. As I come out here, I like to show some leaf shapes. And, and you know, as we work further out, I might want to put in a, a leaf shape like this, you know, coming out like that. And I like to sometimes just take my finger and just pull in like that on a dry background. We're, we're working here on a dry background. And that just gives you a different look to that leaf. And it gives you a, a casual look. See, it's a casual painted look, but yet it still, um, you know, gives you that blurry look that we paint for in some of the other, uh, um, you know, DVDs and the other books. But yet it's still uh, staying very, very uh, shaped as as because of the dry background. So it's a different look. It's a different type of look. So, you know, you can still, though, put on a leaf and then just run your finger right through it like that to pull the edge off and that this looks that looks wonderful or you know there's a wonderful uh, thing about being casual in, in here is that you can just take some of that out here like this too so it doesn't have to be perfect just take some of the the color out like this so sometimes i when i paint like this uh, this is what we call a casual and a casual elegance the shape a direct shape, which is like this leaf here, is going to give it an an elegance, and the uh, the casual here will also give it a different look. So it's nice to kind of have both in combination onto a design here, you know. So and I really like that in in paintings as being able to to show both. Maybe we'll do a more direct leaf here like this. Uh, that has a little more shape to it towards the the bottom here of our composition. Well, and all I'm doing is I'm just using the chisel of the brush like this and pulling to the center like that to give the, the shape of the leaf just like that. And, you know, sometimes rose leaves, well, a lot of times they, they grow in sets of uh, three here. So we'll put one out here like this. But... Again, I'll maybe just take a little bit off of the shape of that, just like that. And uh, we'll come through maybe here like this and uh, give the idea using just the chisel and some of our greens here like this. We'll uh, give the idea of, and I like burnt sienna in that too when I do that. We'll give the idea of a stem coming through couple of lines here like that I like to take a little bit of that burnt sienna on the edge and just kind of put a little chisel mark of it like that gives you a gives the viewer a, a, a subtle uh, you know shape that that looks like a little thorn but yet it's still very casual there and let's just twist that right around here down towards the uh, the, the leaves there you could use a smaller brush too to do that but I like to you know John Singer Sargent always said that, uh, you know, the artist should try to paint with as large a brush as possible. And I believe that. I really do. And so I try to, when I'm setting some of this in, to use as large a brush as possible There in this particular technique. There's other techniques where I use small ones. But uh, let's come in here and let's just move some color and some leaves out here. Let's come in and push some right in here for some contrast and move out right in there and maybe uh, maybe we'll shape up a leaf or two coming out here to the outside a bit more here so that uh, we keep that look as well here like that here there we go that's kind of nice to put a little chisel of that like a little stem there coming through here I think what I'm going to do, and this is how I'm going to do it, is I want to move this rosebud up a little bit, okay? Now, we're on a dry background, and we're trying not to paint our background and stuff, but how do you do it? I'm just going to push some green in here like this, and that will allow me to push this whole shape further up. And I'll use some dark green into this area. Now, I can make all of that really light just by pulling back with my finger here. And taking some of that out so 
and that'll help me separate up and push up that uh, that rosebud there. So I get a little bit more negative um, space up there. Now we're going to have, you can always take some of your background or something like that to paint it in, but what I'm trying to do here is paint a rose without using that background and, uh, you know, keep it on the dry surface. It gives you a completely different look and it's a completely different way of having to uh, imagine your painting. So we'll put a little rose up there. This time I'll open him up just a little bit there as well. And we can take the chisel edge with a little bit of dark and suggest that in there. Pull back like this and just push in and you'll be able to see that stem a little bit more, see? But still have some of this nice green movement back here for leaves and other things that we'll, we'll push in there. And that'll look pretty nice, separating that rose back up out of the, uh, the main part of the, of the painting there. Now I'm going to step away from my three-quarter inch, and I'm going to go down to my number 10 flat. This is one of my favorite painting brushes, especially for about this size of flowers here. And we're just going to start really building and working color. I'm going to go back with my dark right back in here, and a red violet and a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to work. I'm going to start right down in here into this flower here, because this is the one I that really wants to con kind of control the composition. Now, to really get a, a, a great painting to a flower um, and a real nice, elegant look to it, you've got to start using paint. And this is the thing. I want this paint this time. You know, a lot of times with uh, with uh, painting, with a lot of the techniques I show in the series, we're working wet into wet global colors, which stay wet for a long time, and adding a lot of extender and working with the colors to stay wet. This time I'm going to let these colors get sticky, and the back, the dry background is going to happen. Let that happen. Now, why do I want to get it sticky? So I can start layering on thick touches of color. The global color themselves won't dry real, real fast. So, they're, but they'll be sticky, and that'll allow me to push and push and push the paint. To, I can incorporate what we call incorporate the paint, pushing it together. But um, I want to get that feeling of real thick paint. That causes it to advance off the canvas, and it gives it a, a different look. Okay, so let's get into that. I'll show you that. And so I want to play colors back and forth. I'm going to take some of my green here, right along the edge of my, um, and we can come in, probably come in just a little bit more here. I want to take it right in the edge here, and I want to push this in and out. Now, a lot of people love the transparency that I get to flowers, and that transparency comes right now by taking some of this, this color is real stiff here, taking some of these colors and working these together like this. Now, what, what does that do? That takes the green into the rose and the rose out into the leaves, and I'll lose those edges just a little bit here. This is a very important part of the technique right here. I'll set those in and move these in and out just a bit. And I get this nice modeling of color. We call this color just kind of, you can see it gets this kind of um, real loose feeling and transparent kind of wispy feeling to it when we do that. And it's, it's really magical. Now well, let's just take some yellows and a little bit of orange and let's push a little bit of that into this flower here, okay, and uh, we'll put a little bit of that orange, let's put some of that back in here, but we really want to concentrate on this flower up here, let it kind of set the tone for what we're doing. I want a nice dark contrasting side right down here. And it's, that red violet's cool, so that's just going to shove it right down there. And let's push that in and out a bit. That's really nice. That pushes that in and out. It's a nice, cool color there. And uh, we'll get that nice warm, which is your yellow oxides and some of that naphtha red light. Those are our warm colors. We'll get those up there as well, up to the top. So you see a little bit of that orange coming up here into the warmth. And then it goes right down into the cool here. Now, we're going to come, let's come right down into where we're going to have that warmth. Let's build that warmth. 
right here, that orange. It's I'm using yellow oxide and and the uh, and the um, red, the naphthol red, just because it keeps the orange really um, toned. You can add a little bit of burnt of uh, Hansa here just to brighten it up a little bit, but I want to keep it kind of soft and kind of kind of toned. Then we'll lighten this up with a little bit of white. This will be our warm area of our painting. Now we can have some yellow areas and some orange areas. That's a real good thing to have so that your color varies here. Okay. We'll lighten this up a bit. I'm going to come right in here and strike this warm front of the flower. That's the front petal that I want. I'm going to do more open flowers here, but this will be the nice warm front of the flower here like that and I'll build that a couple of strokes let's go back let's pick up some more white here it's nice thick onto the tip and let's just build that stroke up a bit more like that a couple more strokes of that now I can wipe my brush <clears throat> and roll through like this and lift off and, and take off any extra but our goal here is to get some thicker paint here to the surface here. That is our goal, to build some of this color through. And I'll show you why in just a second. But uh, maybe if you get too flat across there, you can take some dark and just push out and you can actually paint back with thick paint back in to that and take the size of that petal back down a bit. So you have a lot, I'm laying color on here, but I'm not pushing real hard. That's the whole secret. So I'm not pushing real hard. So we'll push this up and around. Just lay the color on there a bit. I can take my finger just like this and push that in. So it just becomes, and it was what I call incorporated into the color that's underneath there. And you get the prettiest looks, the prettiest looks. You just brush it around like this and then just move it around in that. And you get the prettiest look when you have lots of paint because they kind of run together like that. That's what makes the real pretty flowers. So let's come back out here to the outside here and maybe push an outside petal right here. And you can see it could have a little transparency. Then I can incorporate that. Just pull in and out like that. I could do that also with the brush here. Put some edges onto the with the brush. And I like to do that every once in a while too, just for uh, some difference. Or I can take the edge. Now this is another technique we use in one of the other books. And I can draw an edge of a light petal out like this. So I can make a, a, what we call petal edges, casual petal edges. And that'll make that rose look a little different right there. Now, if I do that, though, on one petal, I should do it someplace else in a few other little petals. So I should come over and, and start to uh, do a little bit of edging here. Let me just set that one in there. And... Uh, then we'll edge up a bit here. So you just don't do it in one petal. It should be coming in a couple of edges, a couple of petals. And uh, we want to open this rose, which means we've got to turn a lot of the painting of the petals in. So I've got to pull some of this. I've got to just kind of pull some of these colors down in like this. Here, and we'll vary the color, sometimes a little more orange and stuff as we're pulling down in here. Vary that tone, more white. Build the front of this rose more white here, like that. Here. Um, I want to I wanna lift some of this off so I don't get rid of all of my shadow, that nice shadow coming around. <clears throat> we'll put little heavier here Ed, to the front. Maybe this is a nice little front petal here. We'll pull this in to the bowl here like this. Now you can incorporate that together. I can also just take the brush here like this, wipe it, and just pull out just a little bit, just lightly. This is the beauty of the fusion brush. Just don't push. Just set it down and just pull it out. Just let the weight of the brush sit there onto the surface. And that will give you some nice movement to that petal without, you know, lifting off too much uh, color. Here, let's drop in a little edge here. Like that. 
in. And this is the big outside mature petals, and then they'll get smaller as they come inside the rows here. Okay, so we'll throw this in. Feel like this. Let's pull in some edges here and pull out like this so that looks like the petal is pulling out, growing out. So you can like cut across the petal like that and then just wipe your brush and just pull out like this. If you get if you get a lot of white paint there, you should wipe your brush before you go back there. So you just travel it. See how I pick it up? You just travel it to the center there and you'll lose the depth of your flower. So just kind of put a petal on like that and travel and pull the color in here and as you come into the center here your petals should start to get smaller and smaller because that's what happens in real life the petals get smaller and smaller so we'll want to kind of start turning our 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 petals in tighter and and so as they get in here here we go around like that and you can put a little dark in your brush like this and pull out through that just to lift off some of that extra white just wipe off that extra and sometimes I just use my towel like this it's perfect and you can pull back in too just make sure you wipe between each time that you do that use your brush to pull across to soften and incorporate any of the movement there so there's a lot of different uh, the techniques but I have a lot of paint that's what I'm working with, a lot of paint. Once I set that movement up, I can go back and set some petal edges in, setting a little bit more. I can come back in and lift off if I want to, you know, reveal a little bit more shadow here or a different turn or a different direction. So sometimes I will come in and just model in a lot of color like this and then put a little dark in my brush and just start lifting it around and directing it around like this into the center of that flower till I start to see the center the way I want that to be. Just put a little warmth in there. Get a little different color. Like this is the this is the pretty part where you start to really model up that inside of that flower. You get all these colors. They're not mixed. They're just kind of like marbleized all together here. And that's what I'm trying to do without mixing them all up here. Now let's go back and get some thick white. Strike that right here to the front because that's what's going to make the front of our flower really come forward. It's that nice thick white here. We need to incorporate that. Incorporate that. Pull it down towards that shadow. Let's put a little thicker white right out here like a little edge. Here. I can let all this get soft, but I really want to build a light here on this part of the flower right in here. Now that I have all of that modeled up in there. See? And let's just lift off a little bit. So you can lift off a little shadow, but we really want that light and we want to build some petals. Let's just strike a petal like right there. Nice light strike of a petal. Now, you can incorporate this in and out. You can use your finger in and out. You can take the shadow and lift. I can take a shadow and lift off like this right till I have a light edge to the petal. Or I can pull back and forth like this and incorporate that into the, the flower a little bit and then wipe my brush like this and lift off the final little bit of shadow. That's one of the things I like to do as well that... So I like to do both, you know, and it gives you a nice petal there. Maybe develop a little bit more of a light edge here onto this one. But see, now I'm really using a lot of paint. And if you're having a hard time, the paint isn't sticking uh, anywhere you are. Your paint's too wet. Your paint's too thin. My paint's very thick here. Um, and if that happens, you, know, you don't want to stop painting. You want to keep going. Um... So if that happens, what I usually do is I just move off to some another flower, let that one kind of tack up a little bit. Give it, a, you know, 20, 30 minutes to kind of tack up a little bit. Then you can set the next color on top without it moving around, okay? And just let your, your heritage color thicken up a little bit more. And, you know, a few more days of sitting in that little 
cap like that, will, they'll start to thicken up a bit. But the white, see, I just use all that real thick, thick paint here. And I like to just set that movement in there like that. That's real pretty movement there. Just boom, boom, boom. And I, I kind of like that movement that just happened on that one there. And I think I'm just going to leave that. Just big thick strokes right there like that coming out. And uh, let's just leave a little bit of that. And now the thing is, is how are you going to incorporate that? Do you want to just push that in and out a little bit like that? Look at that. Look. See, isn't that nice? And what is doing that is all the time I've took to push in all that other color and then working on the dry background so the thing isn't toning up as much. Let's just kind of cut through this just a little bit and just take a little idea here. We'll give it a little feeling of a petal there in the front. It gives you a beautiful, beautiful rose there. And let's go, uh, and I, you know, I, maybe I want to do more to it. Maybe I don't. I want maybe want to do a little negative painting, pop up a little more contrast. Um, I can, uh, you know, I can decide that in just a few minutes, you know, when, after I get going here a little bit more. But right now, that's looking pretty good. I might take a little bit more of my red violet and just push a, a little bit more into the dark center there like that. And uh, that gives you a nice, a beautiful rose. A little different way to paint those those roses like that, but a lot. That's a and you know let me let me come in real close here like this. I mean that is a lot of color sitting on that surface. You can almost kind of see the texture that's on there. So it's there's a lot of color there on the uh, the surface of this rose here, <laughs> and. Um, you know, and that's what and that's what you want. You want to have just lots and lots of color. And these edges here, playing against some of this, um, you know, it, it, this casual edges here. These you know more defined edges play against these casual edges here. That actually makes the rose look even more beautiful. So it's a really kind of a pretty way. Let's take some of our white. Let's tone it down just a touch, and let's stay very, very. Uh, painterly here on this but very thick see very very thick we'll put in some nice thick color here right up onto that one there and let's uh maybe put an edge in on this one here the dry background as opposed to you know i paint in in a lot of the other one books and volumes and stuff that i use and and dvds i paint into wet backgrounds but the dry background really allows you to get a lot of color uh, thick color on because it grabs it grabs the brush and the the fusion brush here is a soft brush but you know the dry background will grab it and uh, you can really really get some beautiful thick color techniques very quickly with that with this uh, using the drier background and the color here like this very thick it's beautiful different type of painting. So here we'll just turn a rose. I've got to paint that front edge of that one there, which is kind of nice there. And we'll maybe put a little bit of a petal edge of a reaching petal here. So I put the color on and then just push it to incorporate it. That's, and you got to have that thick color. Maybe, uh, maybe you want to do a little bit of a petal edge here right through that green so we get a, a tiny bit of uh, a little uh, feeling of transparency there right like that you can do this as a white rose or a you know pinky rose or a little yellow any color that you want colors colors easy you can do anything a little orange to it here there we go. If you want to edge the, the brush, pick up a little tiny uh, a bit of that texture onto the edge and use that edging technique that draws that edge here. Like that. It's a different look to it, doesn't it? Let's uh, build this front edge up here. More paint. Very thick paint. Coming up to the consistency of the paint I just did on that one. But we'll let it pull down and get soft. 
coming down in the into that shadow there like that and uh, maybe a bit of an edge here going in got to look at the shapes of your rows here how is that one shaping up push this right into its shadow there and I think I'm going to leave this one not have too much dark into that center we'll leave that just kind of soft like that maybe a, a soft little orange maybe a, a little bit of an orange softer shadow into the center there of that one and I'll maybe just a touch more a little burnt sienna a little bit of red naphthol excuse me red violet you can negative paint that too to get more of an edge up to the front tap through that get that Let's get that contrast in there. Now that's a little more than what I wanted, and which is kind of the way I paint a lot, is I kind of overpaint. Then I'll just take a little bit of light here and just tap through that just to take some of it out. It's kind of how I, it's becoming more and more in the last few years how I'm painting more is uh, putting on too much and then painting back to soften it out. So all kinds of different ways to to do things here let's see let's come back in and let's drop uh, this light right up here now do we want this one a little bit more orange so let's get some orange out here let's get a little nap a little Hansa yellow and a little bit of red into that Let's get a little more orange going into this one. And yeah, that's kind of pretty. That orange would be pretty back up in here onto this one as well. Carry that color back up here. A little, little touch of that color. You can use that to negative paint up against that front petal. Let's just use the edge of that. There we go. Just to kind of give a little rose shape there, a little, little stroke. There. Let's kind of open that one up a bit. Now let's get back into this one. And uh, maybe we, uh, let's, you know, so we don't close this down and make it look a little different. Let's, let's open this one back up. How do you open it up? You head back the center, back further into the rose. Here, let's just open that one back up a bit, a tiny bit more. Let's get some of our big, big color here. Big color, big, big strokes of white there, like that. Let's get some of our orange and uh, push some of that in and out here. That's how this one, now I don't turn, you know, a lot of people turn their, their roses or so. I don't turn, I always paint it in the position that it hangs, because then it'll hang correctly. If I turn it, I, you know, I don't have a real good perspective on how the rose is hanging, and I will probably paint it out the wrong way. I've done that hundreds of times. So I've learned over time here, just don't turn the rose. And I've enjoyed that a, a lot more here. So we'll take some more of this light. We'll push it into some of that orange there. there. And we'll push that on there like that and then just incorporate that in. Incorporate the movement in there. And sometimes you get it a little too far out. Just take that off just a touch, just like we did the green leaves there. And you can come back and pick up a, a little edge if you want to push an edge to that flower here or... So I'll let that come through like that. There, that's kind of nice. Put a couple of light strokes there of this bowl coming out like that. That's kind of pretty. Just just some heavy strokes of that coming out there with that heavy bit of paint. There. There we go. And we'll grab some little bits here. Just push that in and out. And 
again, it's like I'll do the same type of thing. Just kind of model some little movement here in over that center there like that. And then we can take some some uh, darker color and come back in and paint some of that out. But I'm looking for the movement. That's all I'm painting is the movement, the light and the movement here like that. And uh, let's take a little dark and work that in like that. A little dark. Just push that up and out just a bit. Just the soft fusion brush just really does a nice job. I want to move the color around a bit, but without disturbing the, you know, without mixing it. Uh, you know, if I push, if I use a stiffer brush, I'll get a mixing of it, and I don't want to do that. There we go. And again, you can wipe your brush and you can pull back in to, I just want to see some movement there. But I can pull back in like that to, you know, reduce the size of it. You can pull down here, turn that sideways just a bit. A little more movement in there. Like that. Maybe a bit more of a petal edge here. You can put up like that and pick up a little color and just pull back in. And soften that edge a bit. And you're just looking for the movement. So sometimes that doesn't quite come the way I want. So I'll lift that off and just do it again. Here. Yeah, that's better. Maybe some of that orange back in there. But this is a real nice uh, light, light feeling to the painting here. A little different feeling. And we go back and lift off with a little bit of orange. And that puts some more orange into the rose itself here. Just like that. And we can take some of that orange. Again, for good harmony, let's push a little bit of that into this rose here. All kinds of ways. And it's just, let's push a little bit of that into that one. There, like that. Yeah, it's going pretty. Very light, and uh, some of that will dry down just a bit. But you know, colors dry down, and then you put that varnish on them, and pow, they come right back up again. But the heritage has this real good, clear, beautiful pigments here, so you can get a lot of different effects. Let's take this, let's darken down just a bit, and we'll paint like this is a bit of a rosebud opening up which means I got to get its center in here so you'll get the feeling of the rosebuds. Rosebuds are ovals and shapes and uh, that'll give you the feeling of that center there and we'll put some light here there we go down like that Put a few little strokes of some light color there coming out. And we want to just build that front just a touch there. Not too much. You can lift off, pull it, pull it back. I'm using a lot of paint, so it's stroking on very heavy. You know, everyone is so surprised when they see how much paint I use strokes off and so there I can just shape that just by wiping my brush and lifting off so if I think I you know I can I can pull shapes down in there and get shadows and reveal something back in there it's really easy when uh, you know you just wipe that brush and this little fusion brush just does its job does what it's designed to do and it was originally designed for watercolor so you know it moves color very softly and um, we started incorporating it into this type of uh, painting here. So now we have our light colors here. 
let's um, come right down here. We'll take our pine green. We'll take our Hansi yellow. We'll take a touch of blue here. Let's make a, some white into this. Let's get some beautiful light greens that are going to go really nice with uh, some of the light colors that we're expressing into the painting here now. So this is, um, we can tone that down. You, if you want it bright, you use Hansa yellow. If you want it toned, you use yellow oxide. So here I'm using a little yellow oxide, especially on these back ones here. Let's just push a little bit of green into these back ones and see where we are with some of that color. And again, we can just take the edge and just blur it like that and back they come. We can take some of that blue-green color and just pull, pull in some movement there. That's kind of pretty. This line is a little bit stiff here, so we'll just take that back a little bit some more. Here, just take that there. Let's take some. That's a bit bit quick for the lightness there, so let's just take some pine green and blue and yellow here. Kind of a little yellow oxide, pine green and blue. Get a beautiful green there. Then we can go put some of that base in. Then we can add a little more light there like that. You can um, take a little pine green, blue, and black here. Get a little blue in that. Nice, deep, dark. Sometimes tone that down if it's a little too blue with you with some burnt sienna. And you can put in a little darker contrast there that'll play up against the back edge of that rose, see? We'll take that and we can play some of that right up in here next to the contrast of that center and then immediately take it into a lighter green right here. Just push it in to that and uh, that'll push some of that dark contrast right down in the center. Now we'll just take a quick little dose of white and just set that a little stroke right up on top of it like that so you see a little bit of the uh, of the green there, but it'll set that uh, that flower right back up underneath there. So it's quite pretty. Let's uh, pull this out here. Pull some of that out there. Put a little bit of light on it. Like that. And uh, get a little blue green here. A little blue green just plays really nice up against some of that orange and pink and stuff. So I'm going to take a little bit of light, even a little of that green in there. Just kind of break that edge of that. Uh, just take a older brush. Sometimes if I see an area there, I want to I want to work with it. So I'll forget about it. My mind just moves on and I forget about it. So we'll just touch that. But uh, stroke out a little bit of green there. Coming into some of those. Bury the greens. You can pull from the outside in or the inside out. Both of them work. Here I have a little dirty red pinky color from my finger. That works. You can use the chisel of the brush like here because that's that's the shadow. We'll put just a bit of light on it and give the impression of the of the light of the of the vein line there, like that. So since this one's mostly dark, I'll use some white in there. Just restroke it out and give an idea of it. Come in through here, maybe give it a little more green. Some green movement there, just like that. You can get it a little darker, more toned. Right up in here, real close, we call this negative painting. I did a whole book on this negative painting technique. 
to shape the outside edges of flowers with like the leaves or the background. You, and it's a technique that porcelain painters use. And we just take that and we just come in like this and just, just push in and it allows me to shape the flower a little bit. So if I wanted to negative paint this shadow right up against that edge of that one there, just and it gives a nice clean edge, different look to it there like that. That's pretty. Let's drop in a little bit of green right in here. That this just helps separate, even though this is very formal in here. When we say formal, it means that the design is coming together. Um, even though it's very formal in there, we can get a little bit of that uh, green just to suggest leaves that are on the lower side there. And we'll just pop in a little lighter green. It's kind of like, now it's kind of like you're painting up what uh, you want to see in the painting. And uh, I want just like a little, like a little stem mark or something there. I look for what we call uh, to break color to uh, break a color that I think is areas that aren't interesting now. I'll just streak a little bit of color and touch a little bit of color to add some more interest. Now, I always say, well, how do you know where to do that? That's just gonna come with time, but I'm looking that, like out here, see, it's a solid area of color, so, and I don't wanna use as light as I did up here. So I darken it down a little bit and see, yeah, that worked, but it's not, it really could go a little bit lighter. So let's just get a little bit more color into it and spark that area out there a bit. And take some of that out. I like that dry background. It gives just such a different look. Now let's just take some of that right out here onto these leaves. We'll let some of that dark show there. You could do a dark vein line or you can do a little light vein line coming down through here break it a little bit so it's not perfect. You know, perfect really doesn't work well on these types of casual paintings. That's where the casual elegance comes from. It's uh, it's um, not perfect, but yet you, they see the shape. And, and uh, you know, the, the viewer has to be able to pick out the shape, but has to also be able to not see too much shape so that their imagination can carry through the painting a little bit as well. That's what makes it really, really pretty. So you need a little bit of that imagination. Now I'm also gonna come down here with my burnt sienna and my yellow. Let's get a little Hansa yellow into that too. Just looking for a, 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 various, a variation of our uh, background with some yellow in it. And that will help help uh, take some of these leaves back here and takes the it harmonizes them with the background because now you're picking up and I'm not doing it everywhere just in a few places on these leaves I'm taking some of the background warmth into the leaves because I just came through with a lot of cool color and now I'm just taking some of the background warmth in so that these leaves can really take on both looks of the warm and cool and that's what I paint more than anything else now. It's a lot of warm and cool. I love to paint warm and cool. And it's very easy, you know, with the heritage here, especially if you're using the Paint Simply Limited palette, because you know the red violet is cool and the uh, naphtha red light is warm. All the others sit kind of, kind of neutral, but because I added so much orange, any of my blues are going to look cool. I know that. It's going to happen. So... That's very easy to to paint uh, temperature. You don't have to be able to see temperature in order to paint it. You can use the, what is known about your colors. And I teach that. I mean, I've taught that for 30 years in painting. Now I'm just going to get a little bit casual out here. I'm going to take this casual elegance to a new level here. Just kind of use my brush and take the painting out just a bit here. and let's just drop in a little bit of that warmth in there 
is a beautiful look here and like that there we go just like that and I think that uh, that works out pretty nice with that one and you can uh, come back and Increase any little bits of contrast that you want to have. Um, overall, you know, do you want to, uh, you know, have more, like when I did roses and stuff here, on this one I had more darks back down in there for more contrast. I kind of like the, the lighter version of, uh, of this one. I might try here, and in this point where you can try, let's take a little bit of our, our toned orange here. Maybe cool that. It's beautiful to cool it with a little bit of your uh, red violet. Just a little bit cooler because you are into a shadow here. Just take a little bit of that onto the brush here and pull that down onto this side of the flower and pull that out and see if you like that cooler orange right down there on the bottom side. Maybe a touch more here back like that onto that bottom side that is kind of pretty let's push a little bit of that into the center here as well so that through this part of the flower here it is kind of pretty on there it darkens it down again makes it a little different let's uh Get a light stroke right here. There we go. So even when I put those shadows on, sometimes I like to come back and add just a little bit of light just to say you did it. And that light just helps incorporate some of those those tones as well. Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. Let's put a little bit back down in here. Just a touch, touch darker into that. <clears throat> and I think that's kind of, kind of, but that's a little bit of a straight line there, isn't it? I was, let's just pull through that just to soften that just a bit. Maybe give a, that's what I like about it. See, the colors stay wet for such a long time. You can play with that, but, you know, you do want it kind of sticky so that you can get that color to, stick into that area and stay and uh, maybe right out in here we need to have a another little petal or something maybe that's what I need to see a little more petal take a thick white just put a chisel here let's work uh, a little more thick white right here too where I destroyed that that edge there a little more thick white or stroke and then wipe your brush and just wipe your brush really well and just pull out and take off that edge a bit or use your finger and incorporate it there you go you get that There, like that. There, I like that little chisel going in there. Like that gives just another little look to that. Okay, come in. Let's just let that go right underneath. I know I have green there, so I can push this like this. I know there's green underneath there, so I can push like that, see? And I can put that transparency of the petal right there into that flower. And then just set a little light color right up on top of that. Just drag it over a little bit. And I have a natural shadow now for that other petal to come over that rose like that. So that sets the other one behind it. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, about painting like that with the layers and starting out like that. And that's why I say the whole secret to the flowers is really pushing the modeling in and around and destroying the edges, getting those colors to kind of incorporate and mix marble eyes almost into there and then build the colors up on top of that 
the dry background, which we're working on in, in this particular book, uh, that dry background really helps uh, with that because it kind of grabs that brush more so than some of the wet backgrounds that we've been doing in other books and some of the other DVDs and stuff. But it gives you a different look, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. We'll go over and uh, let's go paint another one. I'll show you a little more. We'll continue on with a little different colors and a little different setup and uh, try some of these techniques on another one. Okay, see you over there.